Okay, so let's get stuck into all these details then. I've split this up into sections, starting with bodywork and aero. Seeing them together for the first time, what's weird is how much easier it is for your eye to read the AMG1 next to that completely alien Valkyrie, which is all voids and tunnels and defined by what isn't there. This has the silhouette of a kind of conventional Group C endurance racing car from the 80s or the 90s. Around the back, there's a bit of CLK GTR to it. Up front, maybe some hints of the old Le Mans winning Sauber C9, which also had a painted on Mercedes badge. But this one is a 16 step process to end up with something that looks like it was airbrushed onto a fairground lorry. On the subject of front badges, the Aston's badge is metal, believe it or not. It's 43% thinner than a human hair and is actually lacquered over once the car has been painted. Of course, the AMG does have plenty of aero, but in that German conservative way, it keeps it hidden a lot of the time. These wheel arch extract events don't stand to attention until you're in one of the angrier race modes and they're needed. Watch the Nürburgring onboard to see them going up and down, trying to reduce drag and help the cooling. And then of course the headline act is this monster rear wing, which even has an extra flap that can extend. And then you can flatten it back out with the DRS button. But yeah, completely different strategy for aerodynamics. The Valkyrie is always totally extreme, but the AMG, more of a transformer.